Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tim Tom Talks. I'm Tim in Sydney, Australia. And I'm Tom in Los Angeles, California, the United States of America. So today we're going to be talking about two spheres of leadership style and approach, transactional leadership and transformational leadership. Transactional and transformational leadership, what are they and what do you do with them? Uh, before I start on that, I do want to say that we're going to talk about tr uh, transactional leadership and transformational. However, every leader should have a toolbox of different leadership styles for the people they work with. I know Tim and I were talking about this and no one, and it's my belief, um, I think it's his belief too, that no one leadership style is going to serve all your purposes. Uh, understanding- Absolutely. I mean, when we, when we were talking about this um, just the other day in relation to a client that we're both working with um, at the moment, you know, we were talking about the, the, the contextual and situational reasons why you, you actually need to be able to move between these modes. Um, you know, that's certainly something that both Tom and I have experienced in our own corporate leadership lives. So to just sort of say, well, I'm really strong on this side and I'm going to play to my strengths and, and, and I'll be right because I'm really good at this, um, is actually sort of counterproductive. You know, there are very good reasons why some of the um, more, maybe what are perceived as more basic leadership attributes in the transactional side are actually really important. And, and, and in some contexts and situations, they need to dominate your style. Other times, different contexts, different situations, it's all about the transformational stuff. Um, and a lot of it depends not only on your capability, but the capability of your team and those in combination, you know, with the context and the situation will really define which of these leadership spheres you need to, to spend more of your time in. Yeah. Um, transactional and transformational leadership were part of my doctoral program. And actually, that's what I was going to concentrate my studies on. Um, I decided to do something else, but um, what it ingrained in me was how important they are and what you would use them for. So transactional leadership is best defined as leadership that uh, is short-lived. It's for a simple transaction of task. So transactional would be, I need to print out 500 copies of this letter to uh, get to somebody by this amount of time. It's going to be very transactional in that you need something at a specific time to go to a certain place uh, with uh, a specific group of people, or you need to follow a certain process to get to this point because that's what you've set up. It's very transactional. It's usually uh, used when you have groups of employees at call centers uh, for instance, let's say you need at, in the in the plants. Uh, sometimes you would use it because you have certain steps that need to be done in engineering in a specific way to get to the next uh, level of what you're creating. So that is transactional. It's focusing on a task for a certain amount of time. Transformational is when we're really talking about um, people really and it's it's tra either transforming the business or transforming people it's uh using a lot of creativity using a lot of creativity innovation um, it's using more of your behavioral and cognitive functions and not just uh, lower level process oriented functions so it requires a uh, more experience uh, and more um, more guidance for both the people you're working with and your leaders uh, to give you. There's different ways to provide this, and there are different leadership models, uh, for instance, uh, situational leadership, that would really is a form of going from transactional to transformational. Uh, and so one of the tools that, that we use and one of the models for team performance um, you know, mirrors a lot of those points that, 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 that Tom's just raised there. It talks about transactional leadership 
sort of focusing on influencing and providing development in goals, roles and processes. You know, so those areas that Tom's just touched on in terms of, you know, essentially you have a specific task that needs to be achieved within a certain, you know, sphere of time. Well, that sounds a lot like a goal. Um, you know, the, and the role that the person or the system or the, you know, or the process has to achieve that task, that goal, that's clearly a role. Um, you know, and then the process, whether that's human, AI, you know, or a combination um, of automation, you know, that process you know, can be heavily influenced by the leader as, as, we, as we've talked about in our last episode. And then on the transformational side, you know, it's all of the areas that are interrelational that underpin team performance. You know, so the sort of the social conditions, you know, the interactions, the interrelations within the members of the team, particularly the leaders' relationships down in and through the team, uh, you know, that's crucial. And then adaptability and resilience. Essentially, how does the team respond and react to change and, and how do they cope with change? Uh, and again, how does the leader engage at an individual and a group level with the team you know, to, to sort of sustain and propel their performance forward when there's anything different to what they've previously done influencing the performance overall. Yeah, yeah, and all of the academic literature will talk about adaptability as a form of creativity, innovation, and uh, creating uh, an environment that's going to foster that because pe to be adaptable, people need to have a freedom uh, to understand um, the bigger picture and use a uh, higher cognitive function. And resilience is actually going to um, also be leaned towards a, a cognitive um, more than behavioral, uh, because resilience is going to be how, how much you can uh, process and take uh, overall in a, a thinking model, in a creation model, to uh, be sustainable in your overall practice. And that actually is a, is a lot of higher level thinking. And it's a, it's a, to be able to get that out of people requires leaders to be working at a much higher level. And Tom, if I could ask, I mean, what are some of the main influences that, you know, you would point to, you know, that could you know, so sort of negatively impact on, you know, how a leader is, is going to get the best out of people from, from those transformational areas, because clearly they're more complicated and they demand more skills, but what else could get in the way? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll talk about my, uh, some very specific instances, but a model to look at that really kind of outlines this is the, uh, is situational le leadership by Kim Blanchard. Um, and basically, if you have somebody that is, uh, is new to a job and it, they don't have the uh, knowledge or ability to do those tasks and you're going to have hands-off management with them, that's going to create, a, you're setting them up for failure basically because you're saying, hey, you're at a, uh, you know what you're doing, you have all the knowledge you need, I'm a hands-off leader, so I just told you what to do, go do it with no guidance. <laughs> no uh, help, no support, and that's what that person needs. So you're using a transformational style with a person who is a transactional person. And because or they need a transactional leader for that period of time until they're sufficiently upskilled and then you can move back into transformational mode. Yeah, perfect example. And on the other side, think about your person that uh, has, is used to um, – I'm one of these types of people. It's like, I tell me what I need to do, I'll figure it out, and then you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make it happen, I'll do it on time, I'll make, you know, make the money you need, great. But if you're going to come to me and start telling me exactly how to do this in every step of the way, and you're gonna micromanage, I'm gonna all of a sudden perceive that you don't trust me, you don't think I have the knowledge, you're not giving me the leeway to try and figure this out within the uh, parameters that we have and all of a sudden my performance goes way down because you're not providing me with the leadership that I need. 
Yeah, I mean, certainly for me, what's always interesting is that, you know, it's so consistent across the very broad spectrum of leaders that we work with that leaders want to operate in the transformational mode because it's interesting and exciting and they get that it's more complicated and they feel like it almost sort of justifies their contribution, that that's where they're operating in. But almost literally every time they're missing opportunities to improve performance in the transactional area. And a lot of the time, I think people expect that that would be true, you know, with founders or in startups, you know, because a founder typically has, you know, a lot of, you know, sort of visionary, you know, sort of strategy you know, and real passion, you know, they can absolutely slam the relational stuff, you know, they're probably very resilient because it's their baby and, and, and they'll do whatever's needed to, to grow it. Um, and, and they tend to be more adaptive because you know, they, they are, to an extent inherently disruptive, which is, um, you know, kind of a, a, a mandatory adaptive quality. Um, but it's not just startups that have got opportunities to improve around goals, roles and processes. So like some of the very biggest corporates that we work with, uh, you know, international multi-billion dollar companies, especially when we do these performance measures, you know, as the beginning of, 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 of the intervention work that we do, we're coming straight to goals and saying, you know what, <laughs> your teams don't understand their goals well enough. Certainly not the connection between the overall strategy, even at a national level, and what they're doing. Sure, you know, you've got all this value that you can create in the transformational sphere, but spend a little bit of time on goals, and you're actually gonna get a real compound multiplier and, and a lot more uplift than you might expect just from doing something very basic like that, and then move, move back. Same with roles, same with processes. Um, so I think as a takeout, as an action point there, you know, I'd be saying almost regardless of life cycle of team performance, whether you're a new leader or an experienced leader, whether your team's been working together for three years or three months, there will be an opportunity for you to go in, quickly review goals, check in on roles, look at the processes and make some improvements. And then you can come straight back into adaptability, relationship and resilience. Um, and, and, and sort of really do the great work in there, but don't think that this work is done or that it's not needed because you're a leader, not a manager. Uh, I think certainly that, that, that would be some advice for me. And I think one of the biggest weaknesses um, organizations have overall, this isn't even the leaders, is that they think just because they promote somebody, they're automatically gonna know how to do that role or job or be a great leader. It takes, you have to develop people. You have to take them where they are, understand, and this is the employees too, understand where they are, understand their strengths and weaknesses, work with those. Um, don't expect them to be where they aren't. You know, they've got to get there, uh, identify that and create a, a plan. And that plan isn't a once a year plan. It's an ongoing plan of, oh, okay, do this next thing, do that next thing. And if somebody uh, does well going hands off, take your hands off and understand what they need. They're still gonna need some kind of support, but figure out what that is. But you have to have conversations and you have to have a development, a sense of your development arc uh, for your whole team and, and your whole organization. Absolutely. So look, we're gonna wrap there. Um, we've got the next three episodes, we're gonna take more of a deep dive into each of these three transformational leadership areas so if something's you know sort of sparks you know in your in your mind as you've been watching or listening to this and you think oh, i definitely need to go you know longer on relationships or i myself and the team could do far better with resilience don't worry we're going to get you there very very soon so stand by for the next three weeks next three episodes of the tim tom talk and this is tom from los angeles california saying goodbye have a great day and Tim from Australia saying, g'day and see you later, mate.